Welcome to a short uh, video explaining what we mean by a rotating magnetic field that's been created by the stator. So if we start off here uh, by looking at our original sort of image of a very simplified three-phase motor. Here we can see we've got uh, our th three coils or our six poles and as we described earlier in, in the notes we know that the, the top and the sort of the middle, top and bottom, that forms one set that's one, one set of poles. Uh, going across the diagonal, we've got another two poles forming the other set. Uh, we can think of that as like the blue phase. And then the other diagonal, uh, sort of going top top left to bottom right, uh, we have the, the yellow phase. Now, um, if we translate that into a sort of schematical diagram or a, a drawing, on the right here, we can see our, our individual sort of stator phase windings uh, represented in orange. And what I've done is I've represented the magne magnetic field that they create as an arrow here. And the arrow is pointing in the direction of the north to south, which is the, the direction of the magnetic field. So what I've done here is, you know, I've replaced the, the diagram, the, the real life diagram with our representation that you'll remember from uh, looking at star and delta. <clears throat> and you can see here the representation of the three phases. Well, that, those, those three phases here are, are demonstrated by the, the drawing on the right, where we've got the red, blue, and yellow phases. And as you can see, those, those, those phases are displaced by 120 degrees from each other. So what I want to examine here is each phase individually. And what happens when we apply um, an AC sine wave to each of the phases? Well, as you can see in the top left here, I've got a, I've got a single phase AC sine wave, and it's uh, for the red phase. So let's imagine that we've hooked the, the red phase up to a single phase AC, and we apply current to it. And what's going to happen is, as the current initially begins to flow up to the peak, <clears throat> it's going to flow through the coil in one direction. So in this case, I'm suggesting it's flowing in the top coil, then through the coil, and then down and out through the bottom coil as indicated by the direction of current. And that is going to generate a magnetic field in the middle here. And in this case, the magnetic field has risen to its maximum point because where we've stopped, we're at the maximum current and is going from north to south, top to bottom. If we carry on though, as we move along, as the, as the current now begins to drop off in the sine wave, we can see when we reach zero, that, that the, the magnitude of the magnetic field in the middle is now is gone, basically. Of course, at this point, we cross the x-axis, and now the, um, the, the current becomes negative, or switches direction, and we're into the negative half cycle of the sine wave. And of course, what this means is that now current is going to change direction, and so now current is actually going in the bottom coil, through the coil, and then up to the top, and then actually out of the top coil, uh, as opposed to what it was doing in the first half. And then you can also see that the direction of the magnetic field has actually reversed. And now the north pole is at the bottom and the south pole is at the top. So we've had a switch in the direction of the magnetic field as well. And then you can see again, when the current drops back off to zero, that magnetic field disappears once again. Now, this is exactly the same thing that happens in the other two phases. And we're going to have a look at that right now. So next we're going to examine the blue phase, <clears throat> and as you can see I've drawn the blue phase here in the top left. Notice that it's phase shifted by 120 degrees away from the red one, um, and that's because it's the, the, the motor here is receiving three phase AC, and each of the phases are 120 degrees apart from each other. So again, you know, when, when it's zero, then the magnetic field will be zero. That current is going to gradually increase flowing through the coils in one direction. It will get to its maximum, producing a magnetic field in one direction. So in this case, north to south from right to left. And then it'll drop off again, reducing the magnetic field. And then again, it will also go through its own negative half cycle, reversing the current flow relative to what it was in the positive half cycle. And as a result, the magnetic field also switches again. And then once again, that'll drop off to zero and magnetic field will disappear. And the same is true for the yellow phase. You we see it increasing up to its maximum, decreasing to zero, flipping direction, so then the magnetic field goes in the opposite direction, 
and then dropping off to zero. Now, the key thing to take away from this is that actually all of these three phases are doing this at the same time, except there's a slight delay between the red, blue and yellow phase. So typically you think of the, the red phase uh, going first, therefore its magnetic field rises. At the same time, as the red field is beginning to collapse, the blue field is beginning to rise. And as the blue fields begin to collapse, the yellow field is beginning to rise and then begin to collapse. And of course, then they, they all begin to switch directions. So then at that point, the red field is beginning to increase in the opposite direction, then begin to collapse. And the blue field is beginning to increase in the opposite direction and begin to collapse. And then finally, the yellow field is beginning to increase in the opposite direction and collapse. So it, looks, it should look a bit like this. So first the red field, followed by the blue, followed by the yellow, then the red, blue and yellow in the opposite direction. So what we've seen there, <clears throat> where the, 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 each of the fields rise and collapse in, in sequence, basically. And the reason that they were spaced in time is because of that 120 degrees shift in the three phase that has been supplied to each of the phases. Now, of course, that uh, that didn't look really that didn't really look like what we call a a rotating field. What that looked like was three fields switching on and off in sequence, and that's exactly what it is. If I now begin to speed that sequence up, it's going to begin to look more and more like a continuous field that is actually rotating. So here it's a bit faster. And once again, but a bit faster still. And now you can see that that is actually beginning to look like a rotating magnetic field. In fact, if we went fast enough, i.e. if we were doing this at a 50 hertz or a 60 hertz system, then that field would begin to rotate even faster. It would, faster. It would rotate so fast that it would actually appear to be a rotating field. Even though in reality, all that's happening is each of the individual fields are just sort of switching off and switching on again and then reversing direction one after the other in sequence with each other. And the net result is what appears to be a rotating magnetic field.